Hello, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. I am Ken Eos, photographer at Rental and Roof. Today is Monday, September the 15th, 2014 AD. And Ken has dropped a whole bunch of information on us today. New products, new cameras, new lenses. Um, this video, however, is about the EOS 7D Mark II. Now, I made a video previously that it's the short video. Well, this is going to be the long video. This is going to be the one where we go in depth. The first one was just kind of a review, basic, you know, it's got so many megapixels, it's got so many frames per second, blah, 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 blah. However, this, we're going to go into the details, um, some of, plus some of the things I like, don't like, wish they had, and glad they've improved, etc., etc. <clears throat> so let's start off with the 7D Mark II. Uh, first off, $1799 or $1800. That's not too bad, really. Um, more than I have right now, but nonetheless, not too bad. So I'm going to read what Ken has to say. We'll start with that. Um, overview. Fuel your creative passion. Your creative passion. <laughs> the Ken EO 7D Mark II digital SLR camera is designed to meet the demand of photographers and videographers who want a camera that can provide a wide range of artistic opportunities. With a winning combination of cutting edge operations and a robust ergonomic design, it is optimized to make even the most challenging photography simple and easy. The EOS 7D Mark II features a refined APS C size 20.2 megapixel CMOS sensor with dual digit 6 <coughs> image processors for gorgeous imagery. It shoots up to 10 frames per second at ISO, ISOs ranging from 100 to 16,000. Expandable to H1 of 25600 and H2 of 51200. It's pretty high. It has a 65-point um, all-cross-type autofocus system. It features Canon's amazing dual-pixel CMOS autofocus for brilliant live-view autofocus. It has dual card slots for both CF and SD cards, USB 3.0 connectivity, and even has built-in GPS. That's good. For easy look, uh, location tagging automatically, compatible with an ever expanding collection of EF and EFS lenses, plus a host of EOS accessories, the EOS 70 Mark II is an ideal tool for creative and ambitious photography. Sounds really good. <clears throat> let's talk about now. Let's talk about these little things down below here. 20.2 megapixels. That's good. Improvement. Um. Was it as much as I thought it was going to be? No, I thought it would be more. But right now, 20.2. Because there's cameras out there now with more than this. But anyway. <clears throat> Dual digit 6. This is a good improvement. Boom. Part of the reason you can get up to 10 frames per second. 65 auto cross uh, point autofocus points. A 3.2 inch wide screen on the back. That's cool. Dual pixels. I'm not real familiar with it. what the advantage that is. 100% viewfinder is what you want. So basically, what you see through the viewfinder is what you're getting in your picture. That's good. Intelligent viewfinder 2, that's fine. I'm not real, really up on all what exactly that means. ISO 16,000, up to 16,000 on your photos and your video. That's cool. You can now do HD. Not only can you do HD, but you can do HD up to 60p, which is awesome. 150,000 pixel RGB plus IR metering. That's good. Live view mode. That's good too. GPS. Now there's an improvement that, that, they, that need to be made. Built in GPS. It's at the very top of the camera next to the flash. Really cool. Real small. Um, it may make the camera not quite as durable. I mean they had to make allowances of the durability to, to have that chip and be able to, because the problem was when it was durable the signal wouldn't go through the metal. So they had to make it less durable to, for the signal to get through. But nonetheless, good feature and I'm sure it shouldn't be a problem for most people. Uh, picture style, not really familiar. Multiple exposure, that's a good feature to have. HDMI. Uh, let's talk about the next one. Car uh, dual card slots. Um, I don't really like this. this is a, um, I mean, I can see points for it and points against it. Most people, though, they're either going to use a CF card or an SD card. They, they prefer to have, I would prefer to have two CF cards myself. But, I would, even if it was an SD, two SD cards, because you don't want to have to go switch them back and forth, and it's just, it'd be easier if it was, for me, one, if it was CF, and two, if it was dual CF. If they had two, or even three, or however many cards you know, they're going to, they're going to allow you, if it was the same card type. Uh, for me, that's uh, what I would prefer. Now, I understand why they're doing it, because 
both CF and SD, both of these card formats are very popular. So I understand why they're doing both types. That way they can get, get um, people no matter what and make it easier for the uh, photographer. Um, but me personally, I'd rather have the CF. I'd rather have dual instead of two different kinds. That's just me. Dual access, that's kind of neat. You can elect, it's got an electronic level, so you can tell if you're level or not. Self-cleaning sensor unit, that's good. So when you turn your camera on or off, it automatically cleans it. Aspect ratio function, that's a good one. They've had this one for several cameras now. You can shoot uh, 9x16 square or 3x4, which is standard television. So there's three aspect ratios. Super USB, I mean, just means it's faster. High dynamic range, that's good. Raw plus JPEG or in camera, that's good. Pick bridge means you can go to your printer. EOS movie full HD, we talked about that earlier, that's good. Um, comparative playback function, that's kind of a neat little feature that um, we'll talk about later in a different video, but it's a neat little feature. You can uh, compare pictures, you know, it's, it's a neat feature. I'll talk about it later. But anyway, it's good to have. Um, so there's a lot of things, the main things I want to talk about are. <clears throat> To just review for you, 20.2 20, 20 CMOS. We weren't sure what it was going to be, 24, 20. Or we didn't know, but now we know for sure it's 20.2. 20 dual digit 6 processor, so there's two of them. 10 frames per second, 65 autofocus points. 3.2, or excuse me, 3x2 uh, wide, 3-inch um, LCD. I think I said it. Um, full HD up to 1080p at 60 frames, ISO up to 16,000 for normal photography. Uh, you can go a little bit higher for if you want to go high, but basically 16,000 uh, ISO or ASA. Uh, live view mode, multi exposure, GPS built in. It even has a flash. We love that. Um, a lot of professional cameras are pretty flash. This has got a built-in flash, so that's cool. Um, so a lot of neat features. Uh, a great camera, because it comes from a camera. You know they make quality stuff. Um, so is this the camera for you? I don't know. It's a really good camera. It's all better than what I've got. Um, I really like the fact that, like I said, all features I just mentioned, plus the built-in flash that you can push down if you don't want it or don't need it, or which you prefer not to use it at all. <coughs> So there's a lot of really good advances. Like I said, the big advance is dual digit six, 10 frames per second. You can't grab about that. 20.2 megapixels. This is gonna, this is gonna. It may not be as fa uh, 12 fast as the one DX or one DC, which has 12 frames or 14 frames with the sensor locked up. But 10 frames is pretty good, people. 10 frames. Um, for a small, of course, you can add a battery grip, but there's all kinds of accessories. But um, the dual digit six is a big imp improvement, and there's just a lot, a lot of these things we've already talked about. So that is my uh, overview of the 70 Mark II. Actually, I have one. Uh, like I said 20.2 megapixels, dual digit, 10 frames per second, 65 auto points, three inch LCD screen, um, ISO up to 16,000, full HD including 60 frames, GPS. Just a Feature list goes on and on and on. Plus, the camera itself looks pretty good. Um, so, is this a camera for you? Well, it would be for me if I could afford it. Um, again, there's I still like some of the form factor of the 1DX and the 1DC over this camera a little bit. But that costs a lot more. Because it does 4K and it does other things. But, um, so, the average impression, this is $1,800 basically. Uh, this might be the camera for you. Um, it does a lot of neat stuff. I would, uh, trust me, I mean, while I still want the 1DX or the 1DC, especially the 1DC, um, compared to what I've got now, the 7D Mark II, pff, this far and away blows the way of I've got right now. So, this would be definitely be an imp improvement in cameras for, if, for me. And maybe it would be for you. Maybe it's something you're looking for, and, and you can, if you can afford the $1,700 or $1,800 price tag, um, go for it. I mean, it's a great camera. Canada doesn't do anything but quality, and it's definitely an improvement from the um, 7D as we talked about in a previous video. So I hope this video has shown you, uh, you know, not only what Canada has to say about it, 
But what it ha has, some of the new features, some of the improvements, what I, what I think about them. And I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope it helps. If you're thinking about the 7D Mark II, thinking about upgrading or just thinking about the camera in general, I hope this video has helped to uh, give you that information to help you decide whether it's the camera for you. So, with that in mind, I think I'll end the video by saying, until next time, I'm Ken Neal, for Star for Rail News, saying thanks for watching, have a good day, God bless. And as always, of course, keep taking those pictures.